Yes Il porte Dumpy. Oh. Oh. You heard it here first. Bitcoin is going to zero. When it comes out, zero. Just what all pro. What's happening, guys? Welcome, Mando. Hi, mate. How are you? All the best for Christmas and New Year, mate. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. How was your Christmas? It was good, mate. The last three days have been like an emergency room in our house, though. The missus, mum and dad are over. The kids have had ga- gastric flu. So it's been a bit of a, oh, bit yeah. of a disaster, mate. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, haven't slept, I haven't slept properly for a few nights, but there you go. One of them. It's hard work, isn't it? Because it's non-stop, isn't it? Funnily enough. And I think it's hard to imagine when you've not got kids, when you haven't got that sort of... It, even I, I remember, I remember being in work year, years ago when I, when I was working down until five, and all the lads who had kids when I was having my when I was having my little boy were all like, "You are not ready for this," and I was like, yeah. "You're just saying this because because you think you're special for having kids and blah blah blah." And honestly, it's been the hardest thing uh, you, I've you, ever you done. You think that crypto gives you grey hairs, but having kids gives you grey hairs and white hairs together. I I, I wonder oh. what I actually worried about before kids. I used to think I had worries, but then when kids come along, you um, you spend your night and day worrying about the even when they're well. Oh God! I mean, my biggest worry was because when I when, when we had our little, little boy, he had um, bro- bronchitis, yeah. um, and he was in the hospital for a week. And honestly, it was the most stressful thing ever because. You just don't know what's going to happen, and they're up and down. And you, you know what it's like. They, they go under so fast, but then they recover just yeah. as fast. And it's like you're, you're like a yo-yo, aren't you? You're up, down, up, down. Know what to expect next? Yeah. I suppose crypto's similar, isn't it? Yeah, crypto's similar, mate. <laughs> the only difference is, is that with the kids, obviously, you know, um, your, your life would be ruined if something happened to them. With crypto, it, it's very similar. The wife actually. Um, thinks that crypto comes first, but obviously my family does. But it's a it's a very close second crypto. It is, and I've got to say that you know I, I I'm not proud in saying this, but I think crypto did come first for me for for a time. Yeah. I think I did prioritize it that much. I mean, yeah. you know, I might even bull I might even bullshit. I I could sit here and sort of say, well, you know, but but I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Yeah. You, you are right. Like, yeah. fam- family should come first. But I think there was a period where I got that sucked into trying to make it. Yeah. Um, back in sort of 2018, 19, that it, it just was everything. And yeah. it just took over my it took over my, my entire life. Mm. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about this yeah. with you because you've been around a similar sort of time to – Myself and Panda. Yeah. Um, by the way, Panda's the co CEO over at Gem Hunters. Say, right, say hello, mate. Panda. How are you, mate? Uh, hey, just eating. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, mate. Um, you know, do you know what? I can relate to that. I mean, look, I, I'll be honest and no bullshit at all, but um, it, the last what six years, um, I, you know, I, I got I worked very, very hard, you know, pre crypto, especially in crypto to try and. Uh, give my life and uh, my family a better life. And, um, you know, it worked, but there's a lot of uh, sorrow and pain through all that time. A lot of uh, failure mistakes and a lot of, uh, obviously, neglect in some ways, even to my wife. And I think, you know, staring at that screen um, all the time and, and the chats and research and you know, reading through white papers and tokenomics and this and that, you know, you're doing it for your family ultimately, but, you know, it, it sucks you in and draws you into this whole world where it, it eats you alive, essentially. And uh, that's why it's, you know, even though I've been full on in the bear market, it's it sort of give me a lot more time to spend with the kids. You know, even down to taking my kids to school, reading the bedtime stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Last year in the bull, I was 18 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, I wasn't sleeping. I was irritable. Um, but you know it's it does it takes over your life mate you've got you've just got to find that balance and that's the key and I think I'm finding it I think 
Yeah, we we were exactly the same. Um, we were literally, as you said, 18 hours a day, non-stop. It does take over your life. And I, me, a lot of us are full-time crypto. So me, myself, and Panda are full-time crypto. And I think it's actually really hard. Everybody wants to be full-time crypto. But I think it takes over your life to an extent where finding a balance becomes impossible because it, you're behind the screen 24-7. And it takes over your entire life. So... I completely agree. Hey, I mean, and, the, time, and the, time, the time zones, I mean, it's a 24-hour market. You know, it doesn't shut off. It doesn't shut off at weekends or at a certain time every day. So you wake up in the morning, or I do with the kids, and um, I wake up at 5 o'clock, they have me up. And the first thing I do, I make sure they're okay, but then I'm straight on. I'm checking the charts. I'm checking Telegram. I'm checking um, Twitter. I've become a professional GM of the bear market. <laughs> oh, you know, honestly, it's become ridiculous, mate. I mean, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning and say good morning to everyone, and it, it's sort of get, it's getting me through it. But my um, my son, he's he's so intelligent. He's actually he's, he's had Bitcoin. He's on Bitcoin. He's five. He's had Bitcoin himself for uh, for the last couple of years, and he's, he asks me every morning how Bitcoin's doing, and he thinks I work for Bitcoin. And he said to me the other day, Dad, do you work for GM now? He said, you always type it. So um, I think I might be, <laughs> yeah. We've, we've been talking the last couple of days about this, haven't we, Panda, about how important it is to say good morning. It is, and mate. It, sometimes I feel like, am I killing this? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> but man. Do you know what I say to honest? Because we're twenty four seven and uh, 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 different time zones. Literally, I I don't even care what time it is. If so, if I see a GM, and I don't say GM back, I don't care who it is. Even if it's a ten o'clock at night, not my time. I feel like I'm letting people down. It's like you know these the, the bear market, our community, mate. It's it's fucking amazing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I no one. Unless you're actually in this community, you don't realise how special it is. And we've got to try. There's, there's, a, there's a few people, yourself, and there's some. I've got some great friends with big accounts, and the, the, a lot of people keeping it real and keeping it positive. You know, some days I'll have a shit day, mate, a terrible day, but you won't even know it because I'll make sure that my community is perked up. There's a lot of people going through a very bad time at the moment, and. Um, you know, I might be stressed sometimes, but if I can just lift a few people up by saying good morning and, and giving some nice positive tweets through the day, then that's actually getting me through it as well, if that makes sense. I love that. I love that. I can relate to that as well, because sometimes I have days where I'm off and then when I make someone's day better, isn't it strange? Because there's a lot of people in in the real world who sort of, if they see you doing well or or they see you happy, then then they're unhappy and they don't like that. Oh, but it's, like you said, yeah. the, the crypto community is so different because we're all on a similar journey. We're all on a similar path. And when you tell people, oh, I've done this or I've done that or I've made this money, people are happy for you. And I don't yeah. know any other in industry where people are like that, do you? No, mate, you know what? I think you're right there. I mean, the, you know, I've had um, ups and downs in my life. I've had success numerous times. I've had failures and but, you know, all the times, I'd say the majority of the time in my adult life, I've always done really well. And But, you you know, you, you see the jealousy, even even with people that you, you consider to be friends. You know, I, I, I've seen it over the years. I mean, the crypto community, yeah, it, it, it has its trolls. And the bear market turns even the best people into trolls, believe it or not. I don't know if you've ever had it, but I've, I had the other day. And it, it upset me genuinely. I had... Um, Really nice guy that's followed me for the last year, year or so. And um, he comments on all my posts and everything. And it was about uh, four o'clock in the morning this time. I just woke up with the kids. And um, he started um, I, not being very nice in, in DMs. And I said, mate, you're all right. And I thought, is he a bit pissed? because And his bags are down and whatever. But, you know, it's, it, you know, it hits me hard. I genuinely care about the community. And I feel so blessed to have it if that makes sense it, it's getting me through the first four years of crypto and this might sound ridiculous i didn't even know about ct it was actually too uh, just oh uh, oh really yeah mate honestly i was trading on my own i had telegram groups i was in there and um i was you know 
it, the, the Telegram groups were helped me get through, and I was trained. I went through the bear and Telegram groups, and then it was just over two years ago. I was watching uh, the Mandalorian. I fucking love that show, mate. And I'm um, sitting there, and I'm trading, and all my, my whole life was crypto. And um, my wife said to me, she said, um, "Why don't you get on crypto Twitter?" I said, "What the fuck's crypto Twitter?" I said, "You mean Twitter?" Now I didn't like social media. She said, no, there's a whole community on there. So I said, I, look, I, I don't like social media. She said, everyone uses, you know, they don't, you know, they use the different pictures and whatever it may be. So we took a screenshot. I set up an account called Mando and um, initially used the Mandalorian. And I started posting ideas. But, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, mate, I, the journey that I've been through um, the last the last six years in, in, the, in the market, six and a half years or whatever it may be, it's been unbelievable. But um, the last couple of years being involved with the community on crypto Twitter is just been, I could write a book about that journey just in yeah, yeah, yeah. two years. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back a little bit. First of all, um, I want to say that Telegram was definitely more uh, prevalent, wasn't it? Back in sort of 17, 18, 19, Telegram, it was the place to be. And for me... Yet. That was where you made the money on Telegram. I think now it's gone more over to Twitter and Discord. Yeah. But Telegram is still, still there. It's yeah. sad to see Telegram not as big as what it used to be. But I think everywhere is quiet in the bear market. So let's go back to the start. When did you start then? Sort of late 2017, was it? No, it was late 2016, mate. I got it. Um, oh, Jesus. Yeah, and I was, buying, um, I was buying BTC for cheap and I was putting in... Um, bits and bobs, I was losing. I was, you know, I, I was buying all kinds of shape back then. I mean, two of the ones that um, I still hold a lot of now, quality ones, in my opinion, um, Assist and um, XRP. I know there's mixed feelings with XRP, but I hold a lot of XRP. And um, But I was buying, I was going into, I mean, the ICO, uh, initial coin offering, um, craze was going on in, in that period, over 17 and whatever. And I was just buying all kinds of that. But um, you know, I, I think in this in this um, market, it's a lot of um, a lot of mistakes you make in the first part. I mean, I probably put a total of about sixty five, seventy k in, and I, I I turned that into wow. millions at the end of two thousand and seventeen. But I didn't sell, mate. I didn't sell, mm-hmm. and I, I'll tell you a funny story. So I was living in Europe, and it was Christmas two thousand and seventeen. And I said to the missus, I said, come on, we're getting uh, get a villa in Marbella. So we went to Marbella and back, we were there for eight weeks right the way through to February. We started looking at four or five bedroom villas. And by the end of the eight weeks, we were looking at three bedroom apartments because my balance had gone down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it went down, mate, honestly. To, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. From about three to, and I watched it dwindle away through the bear market to about 90k. It was probably yeah. the most horrendous period of my life. <laughs> Honestly, mate, yeah, I, yeah. I swore that was never ever going to happen again. But you know, I'm I'm honest about, you know, I'm honest about the mistakes you make. You've got to be, haven't you? You know, I, I you yeah. Know, yeah. No one, no one's but, perfect. Agree, get you. You know, why wasn't 100%. that enough? Why wasn't that enough for me, mate? You yeah, know what I mean? but, but but I think um, just just to give people understanding who've only just started, I think you have to go through that, and I mm. think everyone goes through that, and I think. Because you went through that yeah. so early, you were then able to capitalize on the course, last yeah. four. Well, I'd, I'd, and, yeah, you have to. You, you, it's ingrained in your mind, but you can't make that same mistake again. It's impossible. But you, some people do, but I, I was swore to myself yeah, well, I wasn't going to do there, it. There is one guy in our community called Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's he done it twice. There is one guy. <laughs> is, is he in here now? No, he, 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 he wants. He, he was in the crypto than we are, so I think it's his second or third bear market, and he still does the same fucking mistakes. <laughs> do, 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 do you know what, though, mate? I, I'll be honest. Uh, last year, I mean, I, I, I obviously, you know, I can looking at that B, uh, BTC chart, I can almost tell you where it was at each point in time because the emotions I went through. And I remember, um, I remember, obviously, in 20, uh, 2021, hitting off on a nice start. I had a uh, 2020, I was accumulating a lot of XRP and various other projects. And um, then the SEC hit and destroyed me balance. And then I put a lot into HBAR, this and that. But 
in May 2021, I, my balance was flying again. And again, um, I was taking bits of profit, but not enough. And I remember on a Sunday, I remember um, sitting on, in the kitchen on a Sunday morning and my portfolio crashed by 70%. Do you remember that? Do you remember that that, that point? COVID crash. No, was that I put, I put, no, that was 2020 March. It was May 21. And there was a there was a huge capitulation from oh, BTC. Yeah, there was a huge crash in the morning, man. Yeah, and and everyone was basically calling a multi-year um, bear market like in May, twenty twenty one. I I can I honestly, mate, I look at that BTC chart and I I I'm so absorbed in the market. I can I can almost tell you where Sorry. it was. Yeah. I yeah, 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 no, no. Sorry, I thought you said I thought you said 2020. I was gonna say, I was gonna say the COVID crash was April, wasn't it? it was 2020. March, but, April, yeah. yeah, yeah, end of March, April. But yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, so May 2021. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah, massive sell off. Everyone was like, "We're going back into a bear market. Get out, get out." Next minute, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Well, the funny thing was, yeah. for some reason, I was so confident that we're yeah. going to bounce, that I'm buying as much as I, I, as I could. Yeah. But the problem was, when we came back down in sort of November 2021 or whenever it was, end of 2021, I said I said the same thing. Here we go again. Yeah. Well, do you know what? We, we, um, the last two quarters of 21 were the best financial um, periods of my entire life in that one, them two, them two quarters. And, um, you know, for me, when I got to around about November, I was sitting there and I thought to myself, oh, my God. I mean, I literally, I, I, you know, I remember I put in on Twitter a screenshot that I put 100K into Blocktopia when it was a half a cent and listed on Qcoin. And it listed. I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a group called Little Dogs, and it's a great, great um, Telegram group with VCs and hedge fund managers and some big accounts. It's just a nice family of people in there. I'm not too active these days, but great set of people and the owner's a good friend of mine. So I remember someone posted the promo video and um, I had seen all this stuff on the promo video and it was two and a half thousand percent up listed on Qcoin and I put 100k in. I must have been out of my mind. I had COVID at the same time and it's done 38x in two weeks. And it was probably, you know, on top of all the other gains I made that year and some other gains on low caps and whatever. But that trade was the best single trade probably in my whole career. Um, and I, 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 started, I, I took profits, not at the very top, but I took profits going up to um, towards the end. And then I got myself into a really good position. But... Um, I got, I probably got too overexcited. I was in stables very heavy in last November. No, I keep on saying last November, we're in 23 now, in November uh, 21. But when I, I, I moved back to Dubai, because I used to live here years ago, I moved back. I got a lot of friends here. And um, I, um, I got overexcited and I started buying the dip again, probably in May, June, which was way too early. But I'm really happy with the level that I've got in now, even though I'm slightly underwater. Yeah. I, I, I'd rather, look, mate, this this is me speaking from the heart, and I mean this genuinely. I'd rather be a chunk. I mean, it is a chunk, but I've still got a lot lot in the market. I'd rather be underwater, but in right now, than sitting on the sidelines, stressed out and stables. And that's the truth. Love it. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. I can't agree more. I keep saying this because... People who are waiting for lower prices are more stressed than they're yeah. letting on because it's they, they are almost yeah, yeah it, it is, it is, yeah. and I'm in the same position as you. Yeah. So I bought in a little bit too early, and what I did was went really heavy into Ethereum before the merge, and it paid off massively. But I was swinging it back into, back into, and it was too good to be true. I was making insane amounts of money, and in the end, I said. At, at fifteen hundred dollars, this was after I'd sold it again at two at two k. I, I bought back in at fifteen hundred and made so much Ethereum, yeah. and I was like, right, I am so happy where I am now. I don't even care if this drops down to five hundred. I'm in such a good position, and obviously now the market did drop again. And it's it's sort it's sort it, it does sort of get to you a, a tiny bit, but I yeah. always say what you said then. I would rather be in the market. Um, relaxed, psychologically prepared, and understanding my position than on the sidelines 
hoping for lower prices, and then every time it bounces, oh, mate, it's horrible. It's horrible, mate. Yeah, because. Every time the market bounces, all these people who are waiting for lower prices are having heart attacks. And I'm not joking. Yeah. <laughs> they, they they might make an, an extra 20% by buying lower, but was it worth all of that anxiety and stress and oh, probably lovely. taking years off your life? Yeah, do you, know, do you know what the thing is? I, I'm learning from previous um, levels of stress. And, you know, I've been there where I've been on a family meal with the missus and the kids. And my missus is saying to me, just can you just put your phone down for a second? I'm saying I, I can't, I can't. I, you know, I, I've got to do this. So you know, learning from previous mistakes. You know, it was a lot of money I put in the market, and yeah, I was. I, you know, I'm down a chunk, but I've still got a fucking lot of skin in the game. And you know, what I normally do is I've I bought an. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the hardware wallet, Safe Pal. Really good, mate. I've had ledgers. We've got it, yeah, yeah, mate. It, honestly, We've got it's, it's unbelievable, mate. It, I've had ledgers for years. And shares it, etc. But I got one, and I've got a lot of um, long term BTC for the kids and myself. I mean, like the long term stuff on ledgers. But I've got uh, got me set my safe pal, and a lot of the stuff that I've put in this year, I've just literally. If you look at the charts, mate, especially, I mean, I love um, you know micro caps, low caps. I've got a lot of mids and high caps as well. I've got a very diverse balanced portfolio, but I've um, I've got. I put nice chunks diversified across a lot of low caps, and if you look at the if you look at the charts, mate, a lot of them we're active teams. You know, I won't mention any gone here, but we're particular ones. But active teams, you know, they're, they're still they're still building in the bear market, and they're down like ninety seven, ninety eight percent. So I've literally um, spread across them through through my safe pal, and they're there now to the be- next bull run. I've got a nice chunk of um, chains I normally have for trading. Um, but the last few weeks, mate, I mean, my short-term trading back turned into a medium-term hold after the last drop over the last few weeks. So, I, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, it, it was just one of them, mate. But once it bounces back, my trading bags, and then the green, then I'll crack on yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I find that most people are so short-term that they can't appreciate that you have to wait for the market. And that's why... The markets are such a good tool at transferring wealth from impatient people to patient people. And the impatient people don't even realise they're doing it. They don't even realise. Like, like, sorry, Panda, say that again. Nice quote there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That wasn't my quote, yeah. That was, I think that was... um... Warren Buffett. Who? Warren Buffett. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's Warren Buffett. I yeah, think he got it off you, mate. Did he get it off you? <laughs> I'm sure he did. I so he, I think he's nicked it off you, mate. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. So, um, so for me now, I think playing the long game is a no-brainer. But this this bear market, do, do you think it's going to be similar to the last one, or do you think it's going to be longer because the conditions now, economically, um, glo- globally, it, it's sort of it's it's a lot darker, isn't it, out there? You've got, like, obviously, energy price, got it, it, recession. It is, mate, but you know what? Look, no matter what you say, there'll always be someone to go against it. You know, if, if you say if you say it's night time, they're going to say it's day. So it doesn't matter, especially on CT. But hand on heart, there's no way that I'm going to put the amount of money that I have done and yourself into the market if, if I believe that it's not going to recover from this point and I'm not saying we're going to have a fully fledged bear market in two months but especially I, st- I added a lot more just before Christmas and the look the Christmas period I felt was probably the darkest period out of the whole bear market you've got to understand the average retail investor you know it's coming up to Christmas the wife's moaning at them saying you put all our money into crypto we're down blah 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 we've got to get the kids presents you fucking dickhead and all this. So then he's sold and uh, Bob has made sold and Peter's sold and whatever. And that happens on a grand scale throughout the world. So there's been a lot of sell-off on retail um, and it's been a dark time. But honestly, I, I believe we've already seen, you know, some uh, confidence coming back into the market, even in a matter of a few days. We are in only, a, we're only in a, a few days already. And then last year, if you can imagine, what happened? It was unforeseen. 
the catastrophes that actually happened in crypto that was enough to send you know the majority of uh, projects under. So uh, this, yeah. this is a fresh start, mate. I, I genuinely think it's going to get better from this level here. And I think we're going to have a nice green days. You know, we're going to have a nice few green weeks, but there's going to be, there's going to be turmoil and volatility as there always is. Yeah. Yeah. What really winds me up is all these bears who've been calling for lower prices and then they, they've got lower prices because of these black swan events. I, I really think if we hadn't had the lunar crash and the Celsius bullshit, then we wouldn't have had the sell-offs that, that we've had because there wouldn't oh. have been the panic. So I'm like, and, and now they're all sat there sort of saying, told you, told you. And I'm like, yeah, but like we haven't, look at what's happened and Bitcoin is still at 17,000. I'm surprised it, it held up the way it did. So, you know, it, it, the, the, the thing is, mate, with, um, you know, I genuinely, genuinely hand on heart did not think we were going to touch 15, but I didn't see FTX coming along, mate. You know, I, I, look, there's these, we've had so many Black Swan events last year. It was horrendous, horrendous what happened. And, and you know, we're still here. And I, every time a Black Swan event happened, I started to deploy a more set of stables thinking, okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm down a, a lot, but as I said to you, I've got still a lot more in the game. So it's, it's. I'm in a very happy and comfortable position. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's some nights that I wake up at like half three in the morning, and I've just had a night nightmare that my portfolio's gone to zero, <laughs> and, and I've done me and the family are on the breadline. But um, I have like probably one of them a month. But it, in all honesty, <laughs> in, in all honesty, you know, experience tells you that you're doing the right thing, and the belief that I've got into this in this market, you know, it's. It's it's everything for me. It's everything. It's become yeah, yeah, yeah. my whole existence. So on that note, what would you tell lesser experienced people who haven't been around as long? Would you tell them to be sort of more patient? What kind of advice would you give from the six years of experience that you've got in crypto? Okay, what I'd say to them is don't keep your tokens on an exchange. And not only because the exchange could go down, because you can mess around with it too much, yeah? And you can panic sell on there or you can you can chop and change and jump from one project to another. That's, it, it, you don't want to do that. At this point in time, I'd, I'd say, and this is what my strategy is with like 90% of my bags, is that I've got it on a hardware wallet. I've, I've, got the, I've got the hardware. I've got the access to the hardware wallets will take me five minutes in my car to get to it. Um, leave it on there accumulate in dollar cost average if you can. If you can't buy any more, then just hold and leave until the next bull run. You know, there's, the, the worst thing I did in the early days was mess around too much with the portfolio. And I don't know if you've ever been there, mate, but you'll hold something for about three months and then all of a sudden you think, this is not doing anything at all. So then yeah. you sell it and then it does like 5x <laughs> within the next week. Yeah. So many times. Yeah. So many times. Yeah. So the thing is, I've got, I'm very well diversified and maybe across, you know, 12, 13 uh, different projects. And that's probably a bit too much if you're starting out. You probably need maybe three or four that you feel confident in. Put them on a hardware wallet, tuck it away and just enjoy the journey. And if you can add, then you add. If you can't, then just enjoy the ride. And also when you put fresh money into the market, one thing that you investors have got to get accustomed to is you've got to detach um, that money. You've got to detach the balance from a monetary value. So you can't look at it and think, I've just put in 10 grand and then see, you know, realize the value of 10 grand. You've got to put it in and invest. And if it dips down by four grand, or it's, you, know, it, you can't get too emotional about it. You've just got to leave it and you've just got to let, let it ride. I mean, we know if you can't take the dips, how can you how can you um, expect or want to have the twenty x's the thirty x's in the bull run? Yeah, I've got um I've got a, a saying for this actually. If you can't appreciate the market at their worst, then you don't deserve them at their best. <laughs> that's a good one. I've heard that before in a different context, but that's a, I've used that one myself. Yeah, it's interesting. And what you were just saying then about keeping stuff on the ledges because I I I agree with that. I agree with that. If I have finance open and I log in, then I'm tempted to swing and mess around yeah, and play around. Right. Oh, and, same. 
Yeah, and I feel like, um, like, like you said, how many times have you been waiting, waiting for a certain level, or uh, and it never comes, and you sort of are looking and watching, you get more impatient, and then suddenly you sell, you move on, and then and then the price suddenly pumps, and you're like, oh my god, if only I waited, and then. But I think that should be a lesson because everyone else is also sat there waiting and watching. And as you're getting impatient, so are they. So understanding that, obviously, there's certain there's certain scenarios that you can point out and say, well, I've never played out like that with here. But you can understand the psychology behind the human anatomy. Mm-hmm. And we are very similar in some cases. We all have our, uh, you know, uh, personality traits. But as a, as a, as a sort of human being, we, we get so impatient with these markets. And I think that it's it's really hard to truly appreciate how long things it, it takes it takes. But once it does get going, yeah. once that bull run comes back, it, it seems to happen in no time, doesn't it's, it? Compared mate, to it's, how long? it's it's fast. I mean, look at what happened. Um, I mentioned it before, but the scenario of last year. So I remember in the summer, and it was it was dismal. It was horrendous, and um, you know I was again trying to just keep positive on CT, keep the positive fives up. And, you know, all of a sudden it came up, you know, August, September and the market turned bullish and it went ballistic right the way through to November, December. Things can change. You look in this market can change in a six, on a sixpence. Uh, you know, one thing that people do is they FOMO too much. Yeah. And, and, and that's the worst thing you can actually do. And I always tell, um, my community, you know, my followers, is also do not fucking ape into what you... Um, if an influencer says they're jumping into something, look into it first. Don't blind ape into anything. You know, the thing is, too many people decide, you know, I tell you what, I'm not going to do any research. I'm just going to see what I see on Twitter and I'm going to dive in. And, you know, they, they jump in and then, you know, they, then they'll, they'll start screaming if the price goes down by 5%. So the trick is, is to do your own research, spend time in the bear market at this point now. Every single person who's new to the market should be researching. And people say to me, how do I research? Well, the same way as we all research. The thing is, you've got great tools on, online. You've got great tools on, on YouTube. You know, watch your, watch your thousand videos. and A lot of them are idiots, but there's a lot of good people out there as well. And take bits of knowledge from each thing and then start researching and start looking at um, communities, looking at projects and, and, and get a nice diverse portfolio from there with something you believe in. And don't yeah. don't get sucked into food as well. You know, people, mm. you know, you just got to try and be emotionless and just ride it through. Defo, defo. You can actually talk to the teams, can't you, as well? And yeah. one thing that we've learned over the years is you, there's, there's a lot of things you can do that people just don't even realise. Like you, you can actually talk to the CEOs and developers of the teams, and you can actually get a good idea. Do they even know? Sound like they know what they're talking about? You don't even need to know what code and stuff like that is, but you can listen to someone and you can get a grasp if they have got the knowledge or if they sound like fucking idiots or cheats yeah. or whatever else. Yeah. And then you can sort of make an assumption, and you can add that to the list. We have. We, we, we posted a, a massive checklist on research that you can do over at TTH a while ago. We need to uh, repo. It gets lost, doesn't it, on Twitter. You sort of, all this yeah. knowledge gets, uh, gets, that's what I about, 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 about Twitter. It gets lost. So we need to find another way of, of doing that so people can get a massive checklist of all these things that people can do. Yeah. But it's definitely, it's definitely time consuming. And this sort of brings me now to finding a balance. Um, how did you eventually find a balance? Do you, do you work out? Do you go to the gym? Do you have any hobbies? Do you, do you know, what, do you know, sort of life? Do you know what, mate? So the, the thing is for me, um, in the bull run, I obviously we went through lockdown, all of us, yeah? Um, but then in the bull run, um, my whole um, life was consumed with trading. Um, and, you know, I'm glad I did it because it gave um, a lot of financial benefit to, to my family. Um, but now, um, life's, life's, I wouldn't say it's a lot different because I've always had a fairly affluent life in my um, adult life. Um, but, you know, 
I get to spend more time with the kids. I um, when the market's not as dis- dismal as this, I um, I'll trade, and that's how I earn a good income. Um, so I've got my trading bags. Um, but with with what I earned last year, so to speak, you know, I, I I probably I probably could if I didn't move back to Dubai, I probably could have retired somewhere else. But I did, and it's very expensive here. But I um, I spend a lot of time with the kids. We go to beach clubs. I've just started back at the gym. I'm on a dry January. I'm on a um, detox at the moment. Um, but I've got a great set of friends over here. Really good set of friends, all Brits. Um, and we go with the kids and their kids, the beach clubs and you know days out and stuff like that, barbecues and whatever. But um, I, I I think a big thing uh, for me is being able to spend more time with the with my um, with my kids and waking up with them every morning and, you know, being with them, taking them to school and, um, you know, reading them stories of a night, spending time to play with them, putting my phone down when I, when, you know, to spend a bit of time with them. And that's very, is so important, you know, trying to spend time with the yeah. wife as well, you know, even yeah. if we're going to pitches together or we're going for a meal, um, you know, how hard it is with kids anyway, mate, when you, you know, with your, with your mm-hmm. wife, you know, you become this, this couple that, uh, met each other and fell in love. Then you've got Come, these little, like passing ships, like passing ships, aren't it you? Is, mate, yeah. So then add add into that as well the complete obsession with crypto, and you know you've just got to sometimes step back and think, okay, I'm working this hard every single day. I mean, even now I'm working, you know, on and off, but I, I must do at least say fourteen hours between five o'clock and eleven o'clock, and five o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at night. But whereas before it was full on, and you know, I look back and there was in the, in the bull run, and there was, you know, there's glimmers of seeing the kids going, you know, dad, dad, can we play this? I'm going to car now, and you know, but now I've made a conscious <laughs> effort to to go. No, you you need to just step back, put your phone down, that can wait, and um, you know, that's um, you you've just got to get that balance, mate. Otherwise, what's the point yeah. in all this work if you know you look back in in 10, 20 years when, you know, we're old, a lot older. <laughs> I'm 45 now, like, but a lot older. And you think, what, what was I doing then? You know, they had a fantastic life. The kids are unbelievable, you know, um, um, upbringing and whatever, you know, private schools and this and that. But what's the whole point in it if it didn't engage with them? Yeah. So I'm, yeah. just, I'm trying yeah, my I, best. I had the same thing, if I'm honest with you, because I remember when uh, during the ball run, and um, I got really angry um, because I was getting torn from pillar to post by the missus and me kid. And I, it, 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 I, I got angry. I was like, let me make money. Let me secure our future, please. Yeah. Because it had been four, ye- been four years had been for a bear market. And yeah. suddenly everything was coming together. And yeah. then my missus, was like, my missus was like, right, four years, enough's enough. Get off that <laughs> fucking computer. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> You don't understand. It. It's all coming together. It's coming together now. And she's like, I'm done. I'm done. She actually divorced me. She actually, she actually divorced me. Um, but we got back, got back, back together. We spent ten thousand pound each yeah. on solicitors. When got to the uh, decree nice side, which like two weeks to decide whether you truly are getting divorced. And then we stayed together in the end. But um, I, the, I, the honesty, you know, it's sad, mate, it's crazy. It? Do you know what, mate? I wonder how many, um, how many. Um, situations are like that where why well, I'll tell you a, a little trick what I did so I give uh, the wife um, a couple of and I, I sent it to a QCoin account so I said listen why don't you get so she started really getting into it yeah and you won't believe this this is the crack of this mate God done his truth hand on heart yeah so you know I, I you know last year you know I managed to pull some decent gains out but nothing like the year before only a fraction but my um my wife put in um, two hundred dollars into Lunk Luna Classic, right, and turned that into twelve grand. Yeah, and I just she she, she done better than any influencer that I seen last year, and I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. But you know, she bought it and she just held. But what it did, it got her really involved into into crypto. And, um, you know, yeah. sometimes I'll, I'll see it on a phone and she's on QCoin and it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine said, to, mine said to me the other week, I want to get on crypto Twitter and start shilling. I was like, no fucking chance. 
she was like, I, I want to get on Twitter and, and start posting photos like, uh, and, and start get, start, start um, farming simps. I was like, no, you are not. I hate all that shit. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's really interesting. But yeah, I went through a really tough time and it, it makes you Sorry think how that, many mate. people have got yeah, it, it, makes, it makes you think how many people um, are in that situation where they've got... Because a lot of the time, it's family who, who, who causes issues. And it's not just if, if you aren't doing well. Even people who, have, who are successful have family who are quite jealous and bitter and don't like them on this new path that they're on. And they sort of... There's a lot There's a lot going on, isn't there? There's a lot going on. Yeah, there is. You know, you know the thing is, what I've realised is that, you know... All my childhood, all I ever wanted to be was rich, and um, I made a lot of money in my twenties, and then just squandered it, and you know, bought silly things, and then I made obviously a lot of money um, in the uh, bull run with seventeen, and watched that tip, and then I've done it again um, now, only better. But you know, what I've realised is one thing: you know, all the all the years that you you wanna, you think that money's gonna change your life. Okay, you know, I've gone beautiful dream car and a beautiful house and you know nice things but really it doesn't buy you happiness you know it really doesn't but you know happiness I, I you know I'm happy and I've got a great family but ultimately I remember I remember times in my you know in my grandmother's house uh, staying there every weekend in Anfield by Liverpool's ground and I remember you know some of the happiest memories I've got on my grandparents had nothing mate I mean absolutely nothing and you know, I remember, you know, some of the happiest times and happiest Christmases I've ever had being in a house with them. So, you know, it, it doesn't, it's, you know, what all it does, I mean, what we do is we work so hard um, to make sure that our family never have to worry about money. I think that's maybe something that is maybe um, comes from our past and, and a driving force of never wanting to get in a situation where, you know, you have to worry about paying the rent or this and that. When you actually get there, then you've got a whole other bunch of worries anyway. <laughs> you just don't have yeah. to worry about paying the rent. But as I say, mate, it's about um, it's about a healthy balance. Without a healthy, yeah. healthy balance, then in anything in life, then nothing works out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I also uh, think that you're completely right in what you're saying in, in regards to money doesn't buy happiness. It sort of amplifies what's already there, doesn't it? So if you're yeah. already unhappy, then I think yeah. it makes you even unhappier because money itself brings a lot of stress, in my opinion. Yeah. That old saying, more money, more problems, it can't be fucking truer. I Jeez, mean, you know, you get something called Paradise Syndrome and, um, the, and the Paradise Syndrome is basically you start worrying about losing the money. So all, all your younger life, you're working, like, you know, in any way you can and, and you're trying to trying to better your life and especially if you've come from a you know a, a background where you have probably worried about money um, and then you spend your life trying to make it and then when you make it then you worry about losing it and you know you worry about exchange rates and you worry about this and you worry about that and you worry about this so eh, it's one of them mate you can never win all you've got to do in my opinion is um, live in the moment I've, I've just booked, and it's. Uh, I've just booked a, a retreat. I wanted to tell you about this, so um, I've been meaning to do this, and I want to really recharge my batteries, ready for the next bull run. So I've been looking online, and I found this retreat in India, and basically it's where you know the uh, the Beatles went in 1968 to Rish Kanesh. Oh yeah, I don't know, yeah, and it's a spiritual holy land, and I've booked it for myself for a week, right to stay in this, like, retreat on the Ganges, yeah, and do Reiki and all this detox and all that. And I just thought to myself to just have a nice reset for the whole year. And, you know, what what that teaches you is to live in the moment. And every single day you should live in the moment. I love that. You know what? You have to send me details on that because I... Oh, uh... nice. Sounds really interesting. I'm all, you know, I'm the kind of guy. You you almost remind me of me a little bit. I'm, uh, where are you from? Sorry, originally. Are you from Liverpool originally? I'm yeah, from the, the heart of Liverpool, mate. Yeah, not far from Liverpool. Yeah, I'm next from to Liverpool's I'm from Anfield. You know, I'm from well, Anfield that's, originally. Yeah, that's where I'm from, mate. As well, yeah. It, it, it's crazy, crazy. But we moved yeah. out, you see, when I was really young, in, in into the yeah. overspill. So I'm sort of a yeah. woolly back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. called now a woolly back. 
Well, that that's where that's where all my, my family are from. Uh, Bootle and Anfield, that's where they're from. And I, you know, I love Liverpool with all my heart, mate. I genuinely do. And I've got so many great friends there, and my family. And you know, I, it, I know people say this, but they, they are the salt of the earth. You know, I mean, they're good people, mate. You know, you could get lost in them in Liverpool, and someone would help you out. And uh, unfortunately, 100%. you know, you know, people like to. Um, I've had a few fights in my early days when I've heard scouse jokes. I've calmed down a lot these days, but um, I, you know, there's a lot of um, let's say, you know, bad press or whatever. But for me, yeah. you can't you can't get nicer no. people in my in my opinion. Anyway. I feel I feel that, and even there's there's times when I've been out on nights out and you've heard like really rough scouts and you've gone, oh, I can't be fucking arsed with this. But then when you are actually in Liverpool, you're so right. Everyone's like, ah, oh, yeah, you're right, and. Everyone's yeah. been sound. It's a great city, mate. Yeah, it's, it's a great city, mate. Yeah, people can't do enough for each other. And yeah. when, when when I've been down to London, it's not like that. No one even looks at each other. Like I think no. that's a lot of big cities, but Liverpool's definitely different. Yeah. So where where are you living now then? In in Dubai? Yeah, I'm in Dubai, mate. I'm on a tree on the palm. So um. And, um, oh my God! Are you? You're, you're, yeah. you're on the bar, are you? <laughs> yeah, very, very, honestly, mate. I mean, look, I don't want to talk about it because I feel like I'm being, uh, you know, one of these people and whatever. But just, just without me, without anyone thinking I'm being big headed and showing off because I'm not. I wake up in the morning, I pinch myself every day, and live in a beautiful big villa, and I, I get in my Bentley and I drive my kids to school, and I pass the beige and Arab and. I just pinch myself every day, thinking, "What the <laughs> fuck? This is unbelievable." Do you know what I mean? I've got, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a maid living in the house. I wake up in the morning, say, and she makes me Bang coffee good. and breakfast. <laughs> and honestly, Bang my, good. my, my, Bang my, good. my, 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 my underpants are all irons, and my socks are iron, make me uh, wardrobe looks like something out of Selfridges. I've never, you know, when, when, I'm, when I'm not here. Every, all my stuff is just like in the wardrobe crease, but everything I, I get my bath run every day for me, say your bath's ready and stuff like that. It's, it's unreal, mate. So, well, I'm, bro, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say that I know you don't, I know you don't want to talk about this. Uh, yeah. much, I, I, I get it, but at the same time, if people apply themselves to crypto and go through what you've been through, they could have that life too, couldn't they? So, I think of it's course, good in hey, some respect. Do you know what, mate? Do you know what, mate? The thing is, what one thing that I've got instilled in me from when I was a kid, I always, I, you know, I, I, I've had a, a like a dogmatic focus that I've, I'm going to win. I'm going to win in this life. I'm going to win no matter what. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to win. And that's sort of the approach I've always had. And, you know, when I'm the type of person, genuinely, if I have a failure, I see it as the next stepping stone to success. And, you know, 90% of the world population, they'll fail once and they'll give up and they'll just carry on with the nine to five. Yeah? But I've never been like that. So for me, it's about, okay, how many times do I need to try in order to be successful? And if it's if I have to have five failures, 10 failures, 15 to become really successful, that's always been my approach. And, you know, that's just me. I genuinely am, like, sickly positive. Um, every single day, I think I annoy I the wife. That. I, love that. I love that. There's a lot of circumstances where you uh, might fail, but what's the you know what's the result? Uh, nothing happens, or you lose yeah. a bit of money. So fucking what? Yeah. But that time that you you succeed um, outshines all of those failures, and it's worth it. So for it's me, great. I don't understand. Like back back in sort of, sort of like 2018, 19, everyone that I knew. Um, in real life, who were in crypto, left the space. And the the biggest pain for them was when the market started pumping again. That was when they were fucking in pure yeah. pain after yeah, selling exactly. the bottom. Yeah. It's like, what, what do you do now? Like, imagine... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, what, look, it's not what you know. It's not what you Look, if, you, if you're not in it, then that's them seven months last year when I was in stables, the majority of stables, mate, it was a shitload of stables, yeah. And, I was looking at it thinking I was I couldn't rest every day. I was more stressed being in stables than I am being a fortune down underwater because I know what I've got in now. It's a very sizable amount. And, and I'm just pitching what, even if I just get to, 
um, a small percentage of what I think I can get to, then, you know, it's going to set my kids up and everything. So, you know, it's it's a risk, mate. Everything's a risk in life. But if you're not willing to take these risks, then what's the point? You just yeah. need to just get yourself yeah. a nine-to-five job and you just need to crack on. You need to go on holiday to Spain once a year and, <laughs> and go, to, go, go, to, go to the pub on a Friday night and get pissed with the boys. You know, that's, this is the that's thing. what... Which is the thing, though, for some people, do. that... For some people, though, they that that is a better life than than the stress. But but yeah, then people, no, it is. That then people will still look at you and go fucking cunt. <laughs> oh, the worst is the worst is is when you get look, he's lucky, him, lucky bastards. Do you know what I mean? You think to yourself, you haven't got a fucking clue what I've been through, mate. You literally don't 100%. even know what I've gone. You know, it's like. 100%. It, the, the stress levels that come with this market, and that's one of the reasons, in all honesty, why I decided to take the 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 week on this retreat. I made, I'm looking forward to it. I've got a lot of friends in uh, from India because in this market you've got a lot of Indians, and I'm fortunate enough because of obviously my account, the same as you, that we get to uh, know teams and you know meet CEOs, and I. Um, I was going to meet a few when I was over there, but I just thought, I'm going to go over. The missus and kids are going to go back to the UK for a bit. And I thought, I can either stay here and I can, you know, meet the lads and go for a pint and stuff like that. Or I can do this and have a reset. I do all this traditional yeah. medicine, yeah. whatever it may be. But um, I made sure that I can definitely have my phone for um, every evening. I couldn't, do, I couldn't mm. not do that, you know what I mean? Still sat on your phone. <laughs> oh yeah, getting all the treatments and everything, massage, and I'm sitting there on my phone, po- po- shit posting on Twitter, <laughs> fucking screaming at these Indian guys. Shut the fuck up yeah. for a minute while I'll take the status. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just there. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just saying GM to everyone, mate. Just, just one sec. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, as a question man. for you. So I believe it gets really hot in Dubai in the summer. Now. Yeah. So, for example, um, what's the kids' schooling like over there? And when it gets really hot in the summer, do you, do you leave and come back to the UK for a few months? Or what, what happens in regards to the kids going to school and whatever else? Well, the, the, kid, the kids go to their off for a couple of months in the summer. But when I say it's hot, mate, I mean it's fucking ridiculously hot. I mean, I've heard. I, I've heard. Just a, mate, just a bit about Dubai. I mean, you, you know... It is. I've I've lived all over the way. I've lived. I, I moved. I moved out of Liverpool in the late nineties. Yeah, and I've lived back in the UK a, f- a few years here and there. But the majority of the time, I've lived all over Europe. I've lived in Asia. I've lived in the Middle East, and I've lived all over the world and travelled to most of the places. And genuinely, hand on heart, you couldn't find a more safer place in the world. You know, the only. You, the only trouble you ever find here is English piss in clubs. <laughs> That's it. You know, everything else, the crime rate is basically zero. Um, but the summer is that hot that goes over 50 degrees. Now, it's very well catered for over here. So, literally, you can, you, your house is well air conditioned, conditioned, the car. Then you go to wherever you go and you've got valet park and then you've got air conditioning there. But a lot of expats will go somewhere else. We uh, we normally just go into Europe, mate. You know, we we'll go back to the UK for a bit, see some family, but we'll travel around Europe as well. You know, France and Spain and Portugal and stuff like that. But um, yeah, there's there's a big world to see out there, and it's a great base over here for that. Yeah, I've heard uh, a few other people, like influencers, speak a similar story. Um, that's so interesting, and. Um, I think that you're a really interesting person as well because a lot of people are aspiring to be in that position where they can sort of travel the world, see different things, and you can sort of give that enlightenment to them where you you are like basically saying, it is possible. I've done it. If I can do it, you can do it. And I think that in itself is so important because if you haven't seen someone do something, then you can't really say, well, if they can do it, I can do it. But when someone is doing it, then... Especially for me, I'm like, wow. I mean, you've you know you done you know, so well. You know what made me, um, my mum and dad, they're on state pensions and um, they, they looked after me so well, you know, growing up and whatever, and they're great parents. And um, 
And now I'm blessed because every few months I bring them over for a month. They've come over Christmas for five weeks. And, you know, when they're here, I take them to all the best places and whatever. You know, it's it's like before Christmas and the kids wanted to see real snow. So we went to ski Dubai, but the missus said, you know, why don't we go somewhere? And we flew into the Alps in Austria for a week and I was drinking old wine and then we flew back. You know, it's, as I say, it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, I'm blessed. Um, I'm very blessed, but I, I also realise how blessed I am. You know, I, I'm not I'm not thinking, oh, look at this, what I've got or whatever. I'm just, I'm very appreciative of what I've achieved and where I'm at currently in my life. I think the, the funny thing is the kids don't know they're born, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, you know, it's... That's, um, yeah, that's my sort up. of issue with... Yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. that that's my kind of issue with, 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 with my lad, is that I'm worried that He's gonna grow up, spoiled sort of thing, yeah. and he gets whatever yeah. he wants now. And I'm yeah. really worried about that. Are you? Are you not worried about that? Uh, yeah, of course, yourself? mate. Yeah, I am. I mean, I uh, the missus goes mad because I toy fight with the boys and stuff like that, and she's like, "Why are you doing that?" I'm like, "Cause you know, if we ever did go back, then you know, I, the boys love it. You know, they toy fight me all the time. I, I play a box with them and stuff like that, and." You know, I, I try and um, I give them banter all the time. I, I wind them up now and again. And it's just to try and prepare them for real life. Because over here, you're in this very safe bubble uh, where everything's done for you. Um, and, you know, the kids are going to music lessons. They're going to this after school club, this. And they're going to five-star hotels every weekend. And it's like, I look back, and as I say, my parents are absolutely unbelievable. And... Um, but I, I look back and, and obviously my life was a lot different to their age. And um but I'm glad it was because that gave me the drive to um over the last yeah, twenty yeah, years yeah. to to change yeah. it. I think you know, it's always the worry that if if you if you're born with everything, then what you really you know, what's the drive for you, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Because um, because ha- having money now, um it, the, the best part of having money now is that you appreciate the times when you didn't have money. But if you've always had money, then then what is it to to, to sort of appreciate? Do you, hey, I, do you I know, know what I mean? Value, I know the value of one pound. Do you know what I mean? And it's, so regardless of what you make, I understand what one pound is worth, what one dollar's worth, what one euro's worth. I know that value, and that's uh, it's. I'd never change anything about my life, mate. Ever about the whole thing. I think. Uh, and, and and at this point now, as I say, mate, I, I'm extremely, extremely blessed and and enjoying it every minute of it, really. But you know, I, I uh, as I said to you before, some of the best memories that I've got in the world are in my uh, grandparents' house, right by the grounds in Anfield, and every Christmas there, and they were some of the best memories of I'll take to my grave. But yeah, so you know, when do you Good think fun. the next uh, the next Bull run's going to come, mate. What's your opinion? Everyone's got different opinions, yeah. but what's yours? I know. I know. Well, I I, I think they're going to have a few fake-outs and a few rallies. It, it, it won't be just plain sailing, obviously. Um, but for me, honestly, I mean, let's be honest now. No one knows what's going to happen, do they? No, no one knows what's going to no. happen. But, but I would probably say next year. Go on, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was agreeing with you, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. No one really knows exactly what's going to happen. We can only utilize the experience we've got, and we can. Um, I, 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 I firmly believe we're going to get a hell of a lot better than what we are now in the coming months. I firmly believe that. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm, we've got I'm expecting. Um, I'm expecting a sell-off. Uh, I mean, you know, this is this, this is not fud. But, uh, and, and, and by the way, I'm I'm kind of like a perma bull in, in some respects yeah, because I'm me, yeah. not. You know, like I mean, I'm I'm quite a positive uh, person, and and you know, I've got stables on the side. If it, the market up lower, I'll, I'll buy back more. But I do think that end of January is sort of when everyone pays the tax, and the, there, there's always sort of a sell-off in panic where people are like shit. I need money to pay tax, so I I do think we might have a little rally up for the next week or so, and then there, there might be a little. But I think we're going to range really for me. For me, I think we're going to sort of range between that. Sort of sixteen sixteen k to sort of twenty k region, and there might be a few little fake outs here and there because that's where the the big the big whales and the institutions trick everyone because then they get the record volume, then they get to short people, uh, uh, they get to get to uh, stop people out, and that's where all the money is made. But but I 
you know, look, looking back at the last bear market, it seemed to last forever. It seemed to go on forever. It got to a point where no one even cared about Bitcoin anymore. Everyone was just like, screw Bitcoin. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. But and, and that went on for three years. Now, as I said before, you know, I'm not trying to spread fudding or anything like that. Yeah. But um, it's it's kind of rather than the cold winter, it's more like an ice age this time around, isn't it? Because you've got so many... But but who knows? Because you've seen it yourself before. Everyone said that it, it was over when when the COVID crash happened. Everyone said Bitcoin going back to three k, Ethereum eighty dollars. Everyone was saying that, and and look what happened. We rallied. So sometimes the opposite happens, doesn't it? Everyone's calling for lower prices, and that worries me. Uh, it doesn't worry me. I mean, but it it makes me think it's not going to happen because. You know how these markets work. It's always the opposite of the majority. So if everyone's of calling course. for lower prices, I'd expect higher prices. I mean, do, do, you, know, like, do you know what, though? Last, last year, even though we were in a bear market, I probably traded around about 12x last year. Now, nothing compared to the year before, but it still gave me a decent wage. And what people forget, forget is that there's opportunities out there. There's still money there. You know, it, there's... You know, I trade off FA rather than TA. I don't believe in TA, even though a lot of my friends do TA. I, you know, the fundamental analysis for me, there's a lot of an up-and-coming event. If there's an up-and-coming event or, you know, something really cool for a project coming up, I'll normally throw a chunk in just beforehand, rally it up and whatever it may be and take profits on my trading bags. You know, there is opportunities, but you've got to keep your eyes open. You've got to keep, you know, you've got to keep focused and you've got to be prepared to take a dip in your bags as well, in order to, to, you know, you're not going to win every trade, you know, but, you know, as long as you're winning more than you're losing, that's the main thing. But there's opportunities everywhere, in my opinion, even in the bear market. Can't agree more. And what I also find is that the way that you trade in the bear market is completely different how you trade in the bull market. For example, I find that with a lot of low caps, I trade low caps and mid caps, mainly low caps, but what I'm finding is prices drop to those lower support levels, and then yeah. they just sort of range. They they sort yeah. of range between two areas of interest, and the prices don't break out. They just sort of bounce back and forth. Now, if you're on the ball watching the markets, then you just buy support, sell resistance, buy support, sell resistance. There's still a lot of money to, to be made, like like you said. Yeah. But in yeah. the bull market, in the bull market, the prices sort of break out, don't they, and rally and just keep going and going and going. Now, what I've got to say is. It got to a stage in the last bull market where we, I sound really ungrateful now, but we got to a stage where it just got so monotonous because it was just up, 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 up. And then it just stayed sort of at that high level and everything was just pumping and pumping and pumping. It was like, it, it just got so monotonous. And I know there's that, there's, that, there's that much money going around last year. That's why I remember last year saying, take profits, take profits, take profits. And the funny thing is, I was getting backlash from people saying, what do you fucking mean, take profits? You know, this is going to do 200x. I'm like, come on, mate, just just take bits. Every time it goes up by 50%, take a little uh, 20%, 30%. Out. You, no, 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 you're crazy. I mean, it, it's both to the scale, isn't it? You know, you've, no matter what you say, yeah. there's always going to be the trolls either side. Um, and, and there's no reason why. There, there, there is certain people that I know that the majority of people I know um, in the market, this is the you know it was the second bull run, and um, they made the majority made a shitload of money last year. But there was others that just held too long, you know, waiting for the thousand X and and you know the mythical whatever that never comes. I um, the, you know I think at this point there's so many low caps that have got huge potential to do hundred X, and that's why for me. The hardware wallet and to leave them up there is essential at this point. You know, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 you know, let's be honest, the, the, um, we're so much closer, in my opinion. I mean, in my opinion, you know, we're very, very close, if not at the bottom, but I could be wrong. But there's, uh, no, I agree. So, I mean, yeah, but even, even if I am wrong, we're so much closer to the bottom than we were at the top. I, I, yeah, I genuinely, yeah. I, I had a mate of mine last year, and this is the God's honest truth. He called me up, and I've been talking to him about crypto, and, and I've, I think I've got bored until like normies for the years because all I do is speak about crypto. But I've spoke to him since BTC was below a thousand dollars, and he he, had, he messaged me 
the back end of 2021. I keep on saying last year, and we're in 23 now, but the uh, back end of 21, when BTC was about 62, 63, and he messaged me and said, to him, shall I buy Bitcoin? I said, are you messing? I said, for years I've been saying, just get some a bit of Bitcoin, throw it on a ledger and throw it away. And now you're asking me. He said, well, everyone's saying Ethereum is going to 20K and BTC is going to uh, 250. I said, not on this run, mate, in my opinion. And then the same person the other day is telling me that he's not touching crypto because it's a scam. So he's definitely a top and bottom signal, in my opinion. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it, it's crazy how many people call it a scam and then end up buying it right at the top, and then when it dumps, <laughs> then, yeah, then, and they say this is this is a scam. I've lost my money, and I'm like, you bought the top. What do you expect? And and yeah. they're the people who are normally they're they're the people who normally call it a scam because they lost their money. <laughs> it's they're it's so screamers. silly. They're the screamers, and you know the thing is. The community on CT, I'd say 95% are absolutely gold. And, mate, I mean, I've met so many fantastic people, genuinely uh, great people, best friends, everything. And um, all through, you know, uh, crypto over the last six years, especially over the last two in, on CT. But then there's the other 5%. And the other 5% um, are probably really nice people, but they spend the days becoming a troll now i don't really know what benefit that gives them you know maybe that they're down so bad and they're so emotional and they're looking for someone to blame but you know it's i, I don't know how anyone could wake up in the morning and want to spend the whole day just being negative it doesn't get it anywhere at the moment you know people are down all they've got to do is hold them to the next cycle and 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 what they've got to do is they've got to make a conscious effort of taking profits it, taking profits is, is difficult because human yeah. nature, you, 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 greed kicks in. You know, you, the most difficult thing to do, and you've got to train your mind to do it, is to sell into green. I mean, green, I mean, green through the bear. Oh, yeah. I mean, green, when the bull market comes and then big gold candles come back, yeah, then you've done five, six X. That's when you start needing to get out of there. Not completely. You need to start taking out 30, 40, 50%, leave a bit in, and then leave a moon bag at the end. That's what you need to do. Yeah. I think it's really hard when you've not been through it. But as you said, you sort of tattoo the, the emotions on your brain, and then it hurts that much that you say, I'm never doing that again. And then after a couple of cycles, mm. you're like, right, you know, I've got it now. I'm going to take. Do you know what I say to people, though? Because we sort of get a bit technical sometimes. We sort of say, take your initial between times two, times three, then scale out between yeah. times four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty percent per time, uh -huh. then hold a moon. Uh -huh. People are like sort of starting to get a calculator, calculator around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I sort of it's say, just, like, just, to simple, just to simplify it, just take out what you put in when you're up a certain exactly. level. And, and you know, exactly. I, I tell you, I tell you what's a great gauge, mate, a really great gauge. The minute that you want to show your wife or even your friend your portfolio balance or you look at your portfolio balance and you think you're a fucking superhero, that's when you start needing to take profits. And another, <laughs> another, another, another top <laughs> signal is when you start seeing influencers buying new houses or whatever it may be, that's when you need to start <laughs> selling again. Yeah. No, I like that. That's really good. That's really good. So, yeah, one thing I say to people now is just sort of take your take your initial out, take a tiny bit of profit and let it ride. And then you're sort of – because even if if something keeps going and they took too much profit and they blame you, if it comes down, you, you can't win. So you sort of have to leave people to it to an extent. But as you said, take your initial investment, take some profit. Uh, yeah. Listen, Mando, um, on sort of clo closing notes now, what would you sort of – have you got anything you want to sort of share in regards to what you're doing at the moment in in crypto? Are you do you run a community? Do you have any? Is it, is it your Twitter that that you're sort so of engaging? So, so basically, basically, I'll tell you a very quick story. I um because of the success of my account, I um when I moved to Dubai, I thought you know what, okay, I'll just you know I'm I'm in Dubai and I wanted to I wanted to start doing YouTube videos. Now, I set up the YouTube and I've done AMAs with, you know, Jag, the CTO, uh, CEO of Syscoin and uh, Paddy from Blocktopia and a few others. 
and, and I had a set up a marketing team, etc. And then I had other um, social media outlets. I basically put them to the side and focused all my energy on CT and research. I've still, I still pay researchers now, and they basically go through a lot of stuff for me and then sieve it all out and then bring me some gems. Um, but I'll kick off my YouTube again once the market starts getting more healthy. Um, I've got my ex army calls, which have got about three thousand uh, people in, which are post some early stuff. But the main, the main sort of focus for me, and I put, it, it, you know, it, it's a, it's a full time job trying to keep the community focused. And do you know what I say, mate? And you're probably the same as me and many of us. Is that you know I didn't expect. I never. My wife hates the word influencer. You know, she says to me, you know, you're a 45-year-old man with, you know, a strong background and business acumen and you've been trading for years. You're not an influencer. You know, I, I, I'm not in a way, and I didn't ask for my account to get the way it was, but now it is. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've sort of got a duty of care to actually feel like responsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the morning. Do you know what I mean? So I just say to everyone that, you know, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. And the thing is that there's there's no rule book. There's no there's no regulations. There's no um sort of there's no like uni or degree that you do on crypto. There's no college fucking education. It's like this yeah. it's called, it's all new, isn't it? So people look up to the yeah. people who've sort of been through the journey already, who've been around the longest, yeah. got the most experience. That's why we invited you over on 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 the spaces today. And by the way, way, by the way. Yeah, and, and by the way, um, we we've recorded this, so we'll get on YouTube and whatever else, and we'll have nice, you back nice. over again. Um, we'll have you back over again for more uh, for more insight. But this has been great mm -hmm. tonight. I really appreciate you coming over, Mando. Uh, keep it. We'll, yeah. we'll we'll keep in touch. We'll stay close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you've been great tonight. So thank you so much for coming over. Cheers, mate. Thanks, nice boys, and thanks for everyone who tuned in. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Cheers, guys. See you next bye week, bye guys. Bye-bye.